heel veel kracht en, uh, en, uh, en uh, met de voorbereiding alvast voor Shavuot. <laughs> Oké. Oké, Skyrim, ik laat nu Rebbe Plenty binnen. Shalom. Oké. Okay. Dank je. Tot I'm here. Yeah, plenty, you're in. I'm here. Thank you very much. I'm glad you yeah, arrived uh, today. Sorry for last week, but uh, I, I don't know what it was. But you're now in. I'm in. in. I, I, have to, I have to excuse myself for last week, by the way, now that you're asking. I, I, I was supposed to stay in, and I had an, a, a, an appointment with someone a little bit towards the end of my shear. And I told him I have to keep this on because we, there's another shearer. And then we got involved. We had to, uh, we're doing something. At a certain point, I f forgot and I closed my computer. And about 15 minutes later, I suddenly reminded myself, oh, one second, I was still. And then I opened my computer to, to try to reconnect. But unfortunately, I think I was too late. So yeah. it was, I take the fault for what, what if something went wrong last week with the next, with, the, with your shearer. Don't oh, panic, we can catch up. I'm going to try and catch up because there's a few weeks we missed and I'll tell you how they all, each set is connected with the others. It's an amazing thing, this. Let's start, first of all, with the very last thing we will say on Shabbos. Chazak, chazak, venis chazak. It's an interesting thing, this. I remember the little logic always told me, anything you say should apply, you could take a drosha, you should be able to say it at the chasana, you should be able to say it at a sad occasion, whatever it is, you should be able to say it. So I remember I said, Chazaik, Chazaik. We're talking to individuals. Let's look at the Chosn and Kala. It says, the Chosn should have strength, and the Kala should be strong. But what's important is Venice Chazaik, and you'll see how it fits into the Sedra. But it's a partnership. And also, when it comes to Avelis, each family, each member, people who lose family, who lose somebody, loved ones, Chazaik, Chazaik. But the important thing is we need to, we give each other the koyach and the strength to be able to carry on. Uh, tonight, I want to dedicate the shir tonight, if you don't mind, to those 45 young neshamas which were taken in Meron this week. And it is a tragedy. Now, somebody asked me, where, where you know, is HaKadosh Baruch got it in for us? And I answered them very, very simply. If he has, then all we have to do is look in the mirror and better ourselves and don't blame anybody else for what's going on. And we hope in Yat Hashem it will turn out all right. So let's start with the Sedra of Bahar and I'll work my way back and you'll see how it all fits in. The Sedra speaks about what we call Shabita, that the land would lie fallow the six years you'll work at, the seventh year will be a land when the, when, uh, the land will not be allowed to be cultivated. Anybody in Klal Yisrael was able to come in to your field and help themselves. So everybody asks, but everybody, all the Shabbat, everybody says, Ma Inyan Shmita Eitzelah Sinai. What is the connection between the sabbatical year and Mount Sinai? Surely all the mitzvahs were given on Har Sinai, not just the one of Shmita. So what's the connection? So one answer I saw was, and it's a very beautiful answer, he said, what man in his right mind would turn around and say to Klal Yisrael, to farmers, you can't cultivate your field this year. Leave it alone. Let anybody who's hungry, let them come in, let them help themselves. Could you just imagine if I put an announcement in the paper, my home is open. Anybody who wants to come in and help themselves into the larders or the kitchen, I'd be stoned. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't last. But you can understand only HaKadosh Baruch Hu could have given such a mitzvah. That's one explanation. But I'm going to give you a different one completely. And it's very, very beautiful, this. And by the way, this Shabbos is just Shabbos Mavochim. We have got to give it a special Shabbos. But you know, next Shabbos, which is Erev Shavuos, yes? Next Shabbos is Erev Shavuos. So Sorry? We say Avarachimim. Uh, yeah, but what is so special? What was the name given to next Shabbos? Before Pesach, it's Shabbos Agado. Between the Shoshana Yom Kippur, it was Shabbos Shuva. You've got all the different Shabboses. So what name do we give to the Shabbos before Shavuos? And my answer is simple. Next Shabbos will be called Shabbos Derech Eretz. Why? Derech Eretz Kod Mola Torah. Because respect comes before the Torah. And this is the Shabbos which we will learn Derek Eretz. But let's look at this week. I'll ask you a question, and you'll see if you can think about this question. 
How is it possible for everybody to keep all the mitzvahs? You're told, keep the Taryag mitzvahs, 630 mitzvahs, keep them. Impossible. There are mitzvahs which apply to a Kohen. There are mitzvahs which apply to men and not to women. There are mitzvahs which apply to women, not to men. There are mitzvahs which apply to Eretz Yisrael, not to Chutzlah or Hasid. It's an amazing thing, this. And yet we are told, we'll meditate we will, and we will keep the Taliyag mitzvahs. What does it mean by that? And you remember, by the way, who said this? Im lovon garti. I live with lovon. Remember Yaakov Avinu? We have a Taliyag mitzvah shomarti. And I kept the 600. He couldn't have done. He couldn't keep keep it up. He couldn't keep anything there. He was with his father-in-law. So what does it mean there? Taliyag mitzvah shomarti. I'll take you to a Gemara. There's a beautiful Gomorrah. You probably, it's a very famous Gomorrah. You remember where the Gentile came to Shammai and to Hillel. And he said to Shammai, he said, teach me the Torah while I stand on one foot. Shammai, the Gomorrah says, took a mass habinion. He took a beam from the building. He was strong. And he gave him a zag, a zetz, a wallop. He went away. And yet Hillel, he went to Hillel. And Hillel said to him beautifully, That which is hatred to you, don't do to others. Zuhi kola Torah. This is the whole Torah. Now go and learn how to keep these mitzvahs. What's going on here? What was Shammai looking at? Shammai thought he said, Teach me the Torah. Which Torah did he want to learn? Al regal achas. He said, The regal achas, the one foot was, he only wanted to learn. The Torah Shebich Sav, the written Torah. But the Torah Shebi Al Peh, he didn't want. The Amas Habinyan, the beam that holds and supports Habinyan, a house, that he was referring, he said, How can you keep the, the, the Torah if you don't have the, to the Torah Shebich the Torah Shebi Al Peh? That is the support of the Torah. So he hit him with it and sent him on his way. But now we've got to come and think about Hillel. Hillel said to him, that which is hatred to you. Hillel was a big time. Hillel was a great guy. He would never have just wasted his time on this person. So what is he talking about? What was the question? And what's the answer? You know, by the way, at, um, at Purim time, how is it possible that Hillel, that uh, Homan knew he could destroy Klal Israel? What secret did he know? And what was the refuah, what was the cure for that illness that was going on? And lastly, I mentioned to you, how is it possible to keep the whole Torah? That's one of the reasons, by the way, why HaKadosh Baruch Hu kept Pesach to Shavuos, the seven weeks before he gave us the Torah. Now, why? Because when they got to Har Sinai, it says, Vayichan Shom Yisrael, in a singular form, they were like a unit, one unit. And that's when only then could the Kodesh Baruch give them the Torah. So what was the secret of this one thing that kept them together? So the answer is as follows. And by answering the, all these questions for the same answer, and you will realize just what it's saying. Number one, Hillel said to him, the Aloch San Savid, he said, the one golden rule, not all regular has, he says, I want a golden rule. And by keeping that golden rule, I'll be able to keep the whole Torah. And you know which mitzvah he told him? We know it in the negative from him, that which is hatred to you, don't do to others. But there's a positive side to it. For your hafta, love your neighbor like yourself. And that's a positive side to it. He was saying to him, there's a golden rule in the Torah. That golden rule is love your neighbor like yourself. Now, it's first thing is you've got to love yourself. Remember, we've spoken about that. And I told you many times, we look in the mirror, we've got to love ourselves. It's, it's not, it is not an easy thing to do. It is not an easy thing to do to love ourselves. Really, it's not easy. But if we love our neighbor like ourselves, you know, it means so many mitzvahs involved in this. Not kina, not taiva, not gaiva, not, not uh, to be jealous, etc. This is all the, the things about this command. 
So let me say that to you. Number one, Hillel's answer was, How do you all keep the Torah? If we love each other, we get the schar for it. If I do a mitzvah, Klal Yisrael as a whole gets the reward. And you'll all know this if you do something wrong. What does it say in the press? If a person does something wrong, Jewish Orthodox Jew does, the, does this, does that. We get tarred because we brought, we brought not shame on ourselves, we brought shame on Klal Yisrael. So therefore, he said that Kodesh Baruch Hu was telling Hillel, when you tell this guy, tell him to love us. And if he loves us, then he can be considered to be part of Klal Yisrael. Moving forward now, we can see now we've got all the answers. Number one, we can keep the whole Torah if we love Klal Yisrael, if we love each other. Number two, and we say Homan. When Homan said, there is a people, Mephuzor, Umeforod, Beno Amin. These people are spread out. They're scattered. There's no unity. You'll get rid of them dead easily now. You can get rid of them all. No problem whatsoever. And what was the cure? Kimu v'kiblu. It's in the word kibel. It was in the singular form. They all learned achdos. They learned unity. Why? If you remember at the beginning of Purim, they all went to the king's party. They all got drunk eating the chaza, the tray for the was on was on the, using the utensils of the Mishkan as well, remember that. So, you know, it was quite a tragedy there. But when they realized they were wrong and they were bringing shame on Klal Yisrael, they got a unity. They brought them in. So we're not answering all these questions. But now we come back to the most important question. What's the connection? between Har Sinai and this mitzvah of Achdus and the mitzvah of Shemitah. The only mitzvah which shows you your love of your people is Shemitah, the sabbatical year. You could not stop anybody from going into your field. What a love you had to have. Could you just imagine? You say you didn't have enough for yourself. So you put a notice up saying, sorry, I need everything myself. Nobody did that. Everybody became welcome to come in to their fields, and therefore they were able to take part in the mitzvah of your haftalarecha kamoicha. So when the Torah asks, Ma inyan shmita etzel ha sinai, what's the connection between the sabbatical year and the, and the giving of the Torah on Hamhar Sinai? It's because it's the one mitzvah, the mitzvah of your haftalarecha kamoicha. Do you see how it all ties up and all fits together? If anybody tells you that the Torah is a closed book, it's not. The Torah is an open book for each and every one of us to be able to interpret it and understand it. And this is something so, so important. And this was something I saw with the Ksav Cipher. Now, I want to take you back a little bit because I want to show you what, what some of the mitzvahs are all about. Do you remember that Sora had a tent? At the very beginning of our history. Now, what was that tent so special about it? There were three miracles that happened in her tent. And because of those three miracles, HaKadosh Baruch Hu used that as a blueprint to build the Mishkan. Okay? Let's understand what the three miracles were. Number one, there was a pillar of cloud over the tent. The presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu was there the whole week. Number two, she lit a candle out of Shabbos. It didn't go out till the following Shabbos. Then number three, when she made bread, for every, whatever it was, A, there was enough bread for everybody who came in, all her visitors, and she had a lot. And number two, the bread lasted for one week. Do you think you could keep a loaf of bread for a week without freezing it or whatever? Becomes like a, you can bang a nail in some of the breads we get in here after a few days. And yet that was a miracle. What were those three miracles? The three miracles were the foundation on which the Mishkan was built and on which her home was built. And you'll soon see why I'm bringing this in. The HaKadosh Baruch Hu being in the tent, that was Torah. That was the first precept which had. What was in the Mishkan? In the Mishkan was the Oran, the Ark. Number two, what was... The Avoida. The Avoida 
was the amount of uh, the the uh, with her uh, with the with the candle the the candle burnt from week to week. That was the avoidance. That was her service for the community, keeping light, showing mitzvah, her mitzvah. And what was the third mitzvah? Was hachnosas orchim. Now let's look at the temple. Hakadosh Baruch Hu used. Believe me, this is something so beautiful. Hakadosh Baruch Hu used the blueprint of Sora Imonu to build his Mishkan. You know, you refer to your home as a base hamikdash me'at. I refer to our homes as a base hamikdash, and I refer to the Mishkan as a base hamikdash me'at because it was a replica of the Jewish home. And you'll see why I'm mentioning this in a second to you, because how important that is. In the Mishkan. By the way, do you all know Pirkei Ovas? Shlosha Ksonim. There are three crowns. Kesa Torah, Kesa Kahuna, and Kesa Malchus. The crown of Torah, everybody can wear. You want to sit down and learn tonight? We're all wearing the Kesa Torah. Kesa Kahuna, you had to be born a Kayin in order to be able to wear that. No, 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 I shouldn't prove to you you didn't. Kesa Malchus, you had to be born royalty. We have a problem at the moment that who's royal and who isn't royal. There's new princesses and new all the rest of it. So what is it selling us? It's telling us that each and every one of us can wear that crown. Oh, you very, if somebody wants me, I don't know who it is. Let them go away. The, the crown which we wear is Kesa Torah. We all can learn Torah. How can we learn Kesa Kahuna? What was the job? Of a coin. Look at Aaron Akoin. What was his job in the in, in with Klal Israel? He was a social worker. He was there as a social worker in order to make sure Klal Israel were happy. A social worker, a voider, service to the community. But what was the king's job? The king's job was to make sure that his people had plenty of food. A king had to make sure that all his subjects were in fact blessed with everything. Now look at the Mishkan. In the Mishkan, there were three items which had crowns. The, the crown on the table, you'll have a look, you'll see it. There was a crown all the way around the table because we can all achieve Gemilus Chasodim. The Lechem upon him was there, and we'll soon see in a minute about that. The Lechem upon him represented hospitality, that the client would get his hospitality and he would get his hospitality, and he would be able to have enough food. Gunesh Baruch was ensuring there would be enough food for every kohen, and the bread would still be fresh. There was a little crown round that table. Avaida, the service of the community, that was represented by the altar. There was a crown round the altar. Torah, there was a crown round the aura. The, the, where is this? These crowns we can all wear. We can all learn Torah. We can all show chesed and avayda. We can all help other people and gemilas chasodim. But you know the most important crown on all three of them? You do it, but you do it with a full heart. That's where we come in. Because it says in there, very interestingly, it says, and the crown of a good name goes over all three of them. It's not a separate crown. When you learn Torah, you should have a shame tov, being able to share it. When you give hachnos asochim, you do it with a full heart. You know, say, oh, you're right. And another thing, by the way, what is hachnos asochim? And I've mentioned this to you. Hachnos asochim is offering hospitality to the rich, to the poor, bakalas and others. I tell you something which really upsets me. And I don't know whether you've witnessed and seen this. A mishulach will come, a collector, somebody who's not dressed so smart and everything comes into shul looking for hospitality. What do people turn around and say, oh, the rabbi's over there, he'll sort you out. Why can't you do it? In some shuls, they've got somebody who deals with the hospitality. So we see now in that sedra that hospitality, it's all to do with whether it's the crown of kahuna, making sure people have got everything they need, whether it's the kahes and malchus, whether they've got all the food that they need, or kesa Torah, whether we're all learning the keta, shame to him, You know, by the way, we can get three names. The name we get when we're born, our parents give us a name. There's another name which we, which we our friends call us, usually a nickname or the rest of it. 
But the most important name of all is the one we gain for ourselves. That's the name we take with us. When we give a hesped, we give the name of the person. The name it means his description. And that's the most important. This is the most important one. So let's go now to the Lechem Aponim, which we had. The Lechem Aponim, it tells us in the Torah last week that they had to go and get the flour. They had to knead the flour and prepare it. Now, I'm going to ask you somebody, how do you bake bread? You have to take the flour. You have to get it from the wheat. So what's it telling us? Why would the Torah find it necessary? And this applies to every single one of us here tonight. For, for Pesach, when does, the, when does the mitzvah of preparation for Pesach begin? Is when the Rabbonim go out to the fields and harvest the, 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 the wheat to make sure there's no rain gets onto it, correct? Right from the very, very beginning. Then they go, they go with it to the mill to keep the flour dry. I've seen that flour. It's drier than you could ever, ever believe. So what is the Torah telling us? Why does it seem to put in an emphasis that they have to prepare the flour? And the answer is before you can do a mitzvah, you have to prepare for it. Hachana is more important. I ask any lady who's having a dinner party, any lady who's invited people over for Shabbos, do you tell them when they come Friday night, excuse me, I'm just going to set the table. I'm just going, you're prepared. Some people prepare, you know, Shammai and Hillel, when they prepared for Shabbos, Shammai would have the food and he'd leave it for the week. Hillel, he, if it was a better piece of meat, he would eat the one today, prepare the next one. Already, saw a Shabbos. It's not Saturday night. It's the going out of Shabbos because we're already yom rishon le Shabbos. We're already preparing for Shabbos. The hachana, you have a bris. What's the most important part of the bris? Is the preparation of the baby. You have to hold it, get the clip properly. And the same with shechita. You have to hold it. Anybody can come along with a knife, one, two, three. But the preparation to ensure the safety, hachana, the preparation. What do we find as well, by the way? That Shloishim Yom Lifleya Chag Doshim Alachag, we have 30 days before Pesach, we have to prepare. We start learning all the halachas, preparation for Pesach. Shavuos, when do we start preparing for Shavuos? When did Klal Israel start preparing for Shavuos? They started preparing, it says, it says, the second day of Pesach. In Eretz Yisrael, it would be the first day Chayla Mayed. By us, it's the second day of Pesach in Chutz Lahores. That's when Pes when we start preparing for Shavuos. Not any other time. That is the most amazing thing of all. So could you see, if you want to do a mitzvah, it's the preparation of the mitzvah which is important. When you want to daven, and I say this with the greatest of respect, people walk into shul, put the talisman feeling on, bum, 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 and there's no kavona, there's no heart, there's no preparation. It's just a matter of getting down and doing it as fast as possible, which is a big, big shame. And that's one of the reasons why the Torah is warning us that we should be preparing for the Torah. Now we come on to a major issue. And this is an issue which I remember hearing it, and I'll tell you, I love quoting. It was Lord Jacobus who actually gave me the whole source of it, but I will add to it a bit. The Kriya Satora for Yom Kippur, which we missed learning it, by the way, I prepared it, was Acharemais, correct? It was the eve, it was all about what the Kohen Godel would do in the Beis HaMikdosh. It's called the Avoida, the service, when you would take an animal. Now here as well, by the way, there's a lesson to learn here. You take two goats, one is sacrificed and the other is taken to the midbar. Okay? Now, I want you to imagine, just for a few seconds, that you are the goat that's going to go Lashem. And you go out with the other one. And the other's goat knows where is it going. Ha <laughs> ha! His partner's going to be kicked over a mountain. He's going to be killed. Now, he doesn't know what's going to happen to him yet. So what does he do? He starts making chayzik. He starts making fun of him. You poor lad. Ah, oh, you're going. And this is something which we never, you know, this is the expression in Hebrew. 
I'll tell you this chaver of shetagil. I'm coming. Never prejudge anybody. You don't know what's going to happen to you, mate. You're laughing at somebody else, and you're going to be slaughtered in the in the midst of it. Yes, you're going to go to a kodesh baruch Hu, but nevertheless, don't make chizik of somebody who's less fortunate than you, who is actually being used also as a korban to a kodesh for klal Yisrael. But he will be really somebody who will be making big big fun of it. But we learn there what is it all about. In the morning, we read about Kriya Satoira of Yom Kippur morning. The Kriya Satoira is all about the Avoida in the base of Mikdash, where the red there was a red uh, cable, a red thread, and it turned white. The Kohen Godel knew his feelers were answered. Could you imagine the responsibility of that Kohen Godel? And we've all got to sit in the morning, and what we're doing is we're davening. Because Rosh Hashanah is what we daven for the future. Yom Kippur is what we think about the past. It's interesting, we misunderstand that. The only time we do the Avodah, Al Chet Shechatonu, please forgive us, is Yom Kippur. Because we've asked for something. We've asked for life. We've asked for Parnosa. We've asked for peace. That was Rosh Hashanah. You don't see any anything about Al Chet and Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur we're already doing the Avodah. We're praying to Kodesh Baruch to forgive us there. Now, that's very interesting, but we have a bigger problem. We come back from Mincha. Okay? What are we laying at Mincha? We're laying at Mincha all the forbidden relationships. Now, do me a favor. Would you think about your family life in Yom Kippur Day? We're not allowed to wear shoes. We're not allowed relationships. We're not allowed to eat or to drink. And the last thing I'm thinking of in Yom Kippur afternoon is forbidden relationships. What is it? What are the Chachomim asking us? There has to be, there has to be a connection between the Kriya Satoira and the day of Yom Kippur. Every Yom Tov we read, we read something which is Nagea, which is apl applicable to the Yom Tov. Shavuos, you'll read the Aseris Adibros, correct? That's something which we look at next week for Shavuos. But we don't. We, we we wouldn't start talking about all the forbidden relationships on Shavuos for care. We stay up all night. We're learning. We're accepting the Torah, which we'll come to with another chance. So why is it that the the Chachamim instituted with Ashina that where the Kriya Satora should be for forbidden relationships? It's the last thing on my mind. Should I tell you the answer? It's a beautiful answer I'll give you. Do you remember there was a man called Bilam? Bilam cursed the Jewish people. Every brocha, every curse became a brocha. But unfortunately, every brocha except one became a curse. Yoshev lo davad. We're we're stuck by ourselves. We're isolated. Do you see what's happening to Klal Yisrael today? How isolated we all are. And no, no, we're no longer part of a society. We have been excluded from everything, the anti-Semitism. And I remember somebody gave me the definition. What's the definition of an anti-Semite? It says somebody who, does, who hates us more than is it absolutely necessary. Anti-Semitism, you should know, was created for Klal Yisrael. It was created for us. Why? Because the, every time we get an anti-Semitic attack, no matter who we are or where we are, we pull together. We become a people. We become and we all want to fight against the anti-Semitism. The greatest danger to Klal Yisrael is the division within Klal Yisrael, the machloikas within Klal Yisrael. Now let's look and see why we have it. It says as follows. He gave one brocha which still remains today. And unfortunately, it's being changed over to becoming almost a detriment. What do we say? Matoivu oholecho Yaakov mishkenosecho Yisrael. Now we all translate this so beautifully. How good are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling place, O Israel? What are we saying? Rashi, the commentator, said that Bilam saw there was no jealousy. Nobody could see into their neighbor's house. No window faced into the other neighbor, no door faced another door. Everybody had their privacy. There was no jealousy. 
And Bila was so envious of this. Here's a, a people who were satisfied with what they had. Let me tell you something. Matoivu is another and translation, I'll tell you. Let's take the words. How good at Matoivu? How is it good? Oihel, what's an oihel? An oihel is a private tent, a private home. And what is Yaakov? Yaakov was an individual. It was a single man before he got his name changed to Israel, representing the people of Israel. And what was, an, what was the Mishkan? The Mishkan was the home, the shul, the dwelling place of the community, the big home, the big house. And you know how I translate it? I'll tell you. Matoivu oholecho Yaakov. Only as good as the homes of the individual is Mishkan Osecho Yisrael, will the community of Israel be. In other words, like I just said before, if a home is built on Torah and there's Avas Yisrael and people live together, then Klal Yisrael will be healthy, the Shul will be healthy, the Mishkan will be rebuilt, but it's only as good as the individual homes that will actually be able to survive. And this is something which is like a theme running right the way through all the sedras, telling us we have to learn how to live in unity and not to be individuals. But however, Bilam gave us that curse and it's a brocha, but sadly people are not making it. Now I want to tell you, and it worries me, and this is something which I'd like you to think about very, very seriously. You all know at the moment we're on Zoom, we're learning on Zoom. But you know what's happened with Zoom? It's actually destroying Klal Israel. How is that? Very, very simple. I was told this year, somebody came to me and said, Rabbi, Pesach was the best one we've ever had. I said, how? We were all on Zoom. Uh, it's Seda, America, Australia, Israel. I said, but it's Yonta. Yeah, but it's Zoom. It's, it's, it's a pandemic. We've got to be lenient about it. I thought to myself, Rabboni Shalolam, what have we let ourselves in for? And you know, I found a proof of all of this and the danger that we've got. Do you remember going back to the Eagle Hazor, the golden calf? Again, we missed that sedra, so I'll show you how it all fits in. And the Eagle Hazor, the Jewish people built a golden calf. Who he built it? It was Aaron Akoin. And they said, when Moshe asked him, what did you do? He said, I took a piece of gold, I threw it into the fire, and out came the eagle as of the golden calf. But he said to Moshe, but Moshe, they didn't want to do idol worship. That was not their purpose. They thought you were not coming back. They were starting to panic. And if you didn't come back, they thought we would need an emissary, somebody to stand in for us. We would need a shleich tzibur. So they said we built this, and unfortunately it turned out to be a golden calf. Moshe Rabbeinu turned around and he said, you know, he said, I took a lump of gold and threw it into the fire. And what did I get out of it? I got the menorah. Do you remember he was showing the menorah? And now what was the difference? He said, the difference is as follows. He said, in the, when it came to the building of the Mishkan, which we've been reading Sedra after Sedra after Sedra, Truma, Tetzave, Kisiso, Vayakel, Pekude, and then we come on to here, Baha, Bechukoy, Emma, Baha, Bechukoy, Sai, and he says, Kedoshi, we'll come to that in a second. You know, by the way, it's interesting. Somebody always used to say to me, Acharemas, after a person dies, Kedoshi, he becomes so holy. He's the greatest saint that ever lived. And Emma, that's how they speak to him about it. So everybody's got something good to talk about. So what was happening there? When it came to the building of the Mishkan, was there any change? It says there, and look, please, by yourself, you will see in the center, every item that was built, Ka'asher Tzivo Hashem Es Moshe. Just as the Kodesh Baruch Hu commanded Moshe, that is what they did. There was no change whatsoever in anything that they made. Everything was as a Kodesh Baruch Hu commanded them. They couldn't do it. A Kodesh Baruch Hu showed them. Now, just remember one thing. 
within Kalal Israel, we had artisans, the artists who knew how to build, artisans who knew how to design, how to paint, how to do everything. So don't think there weren't there people who could have come along and designed anything and changed it. But that was the thing they didn't do. They did not change the Torah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told them what to build. The punishment, because they didn't have the leadership of Moshe there, is that everybody came along with an Eitzah, Toiva, we can change this, we can change that, and we can change the next thing. Now that's how the explanation goes. Let me add to this the warning, and I really mean this warning because it worries me. Israel Yisrael are going through a lot of turmoil because people are using any excuse now because of the pandemic. Oh, we must have an excuse for this. I'll give you an example. Al pi halocha. The psak was given by the Bezdin that you had to hear the reading of the Megillah. The only people who were exempt from reading the Megillah or listening to the Megillah from another mouth was those people who were oines, forbidden to go out. They were, it was dangerous for them. They were stuck in their homes and they couldn't get there. HaKadosh Prophet says, oines rachmona patra. You're forgiven for that. But Stamazo, you could have found a minion. There were enough minyonim for people to go and listen to it. But people are using this pandemic as an excuse to change the whole Torah. As if to say, I've been reading it by some of these so-called left-wing rabbon, so-called rabbonim. Do away with all the shows now. You can have Davin from the, the, the Zoom. You know, there's a difference in the Zoom and learning. And when you go back to the no more Zooms, I promise you, you will see you know, there's a, there's a beautiful posik in the Torah. Do you remember Moshe Rabbeinu commanded the Jewish people to, to write a Sefer Torah? And not only should they write the Sefer Torah, it says, mm-hmm. but put it into their mouths. What does it mean? You spoon feed them. I'll tell you what it means. And this is my explanation to this. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was telling Klal Yisrael, sit at the foot of a rov, watch him, copy him, and you will learn more from the inner th- the actions. That's why when children don't go to school and they do on, on the, the Zoom, it's not the same anymore. You've got to be able to see the teacher. You've got to be see his characters. Have a look, by the way, and you will see there were G'daylim, who I remember the Talmidim, where it was a story the Gomorrah, that when the Rav got married, they slept under his bed to find out how to behave. And this is Emma's, because they wanted to, to, to learn from the Rebbe, not just the theory, but they wanted to learn the practice as well. We have to learn, and when we see somebody face to face, you learn more from body language than you do from the words that a person speaks. And this is something which is very, very difficult. I can sit here and preach and do it, but to have an actual feeling, to see the excitement that you got when you're able to find something beautiful and something there. And that's what it's all about. This is the Simu Befihem. We've got to learn the Torah, which is given to by Kodesh Bochel, to put it into our mouths and learn it. But remember, we don't change it. Tariag Mitzvah Shomati, he kept the Mitzvah after Rechel Kamoicha, and we don't change it just to suit ourselves. We can't change, you know, some people are now saying, well, we've got Eretz Yisrael, and well, we don't need two days anymore. We still need two days in Chutz Lourdes. We don't stand a chance of changing it until HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes along and puts back the base Amikdash and will be in Eretz Yisrael. And until such time, the halacha stands. You can't change halachas. It's not up to us. The only people who can change halachas is a Bezdin who's greater in number and greater in knowledge. We are at the moment going what's through called the Eurydice Hadiris, a degeneration, going down. We're not going up. Think about this. Moshe gave us the Torah. Along came the, the Chachomim, there was a, the, the Mishnah by the Tanoim. Just a short verse, they knew what to say. Then the Gemara comes along, because they didn't understand what the Mishnah was about. And there's an argument between this rabbi and that rabbi, what they meant. Is it eight to one, one to eight? It, it's, it's all discussion. Then we have what's called the Rishonim, the early rabbis, then the later rabbis, then the Ga'inim, and then we've got the modern rabbis and the Rosh Hashivas. Everything is going what we call down and down and down because we don't understand. We can't get to the greatness of these great rabbis who've gone before us. The world is actually bereft of these great rabbis. And this is where comes in 
to it here. Now, let me look at one other subject, which we missed, because I prepared last week, and I prepared quite a bit. Uh, you remember with Aaron Akoyin, he lost his two sons, and he was superhuman. Vayidam Aaron, Aaron kept quiet. Now, the question is, why? How is it physically possible for him to have kept quiet? Chas v'sholem, we lose a family, we lose a friend. It, it's 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 a sad day for Klal Yisrael. We we cry. We have all the heel halachas. What was going on with Aaron Akain? He didn't cry. I'm going to tell you something about Aaron Akain. Do you remember when Aaron went with Moshe Rabbeinu to see Pharaoh? Pharaoh told him, "Near people, they're lazy." They're good for nothings, these Jews. You come to get them out over well, my dead body. I am not going out. They're so lazy, I'm going to make it harder for them. I'm going to make it, they're going to have to build their own bricks. They're not going to get the straw. They're going to have to go collect it, right? Moshe Rabbeinu complained. Rabbeinu Shalala, we came to help them. What have you done? Did Aaron complain? Not a word. Aaron never said a word. Now, Why? And you have to look and see what Aaron learned. Where was Aaron brought up? He was brought up in Mitzrayim. Where was his brother? His brother was, he knew his brother was put into the Nile, was saved by Batya, the daughter of Pharaoh. He then was taken into the palace. He then, if you remember the story, became viceroy. He then killed the Egyptian and he ran away. According to many interpretations of the Medrash, he became a king of a small nation. Then he went and he married Yisra's daughter, Sepoira. And then he came back to bring... What was he watching? What was he seeing? He was seeing something unbelievable. He was seeing that the Kaddish Baruch Hu was ruling the world. It wasn't a world of chance. He was there. Moshe Rabbeinu was saved. HaKadosh Baruch Hu realized if he said something, he'll do it. Moshe was saved. And by the way, do you know why he was saved? An amazing thing, this. Batya, the daughter of Pharaoh, went down to the river. And you know the miracle, her hand stretched out. She brought the baby in and she came to her father. And she says, Daddy, and she says, Ki mina I got this baby from the water, this little boy. What she mean she got it from the water? That means he's a Jewish child. So Pharaoh should have turned around and said, throw him back in again. You know, you can't have him. No, he didn't. Because you know what she said to him? And you've got to understand it all about this Egyptian. What was the god of the Nile? The Nile was their god, correct? Not, they worshipped the Nile. Pharaoh worshipped it. So when Batya came along and she said, I was down by the riverside. I was davening to God. She says, and what I find? God had a little baby in the water. And a miracle happened that my son stretched out and I brought the baby in. Ki minamayim, the, he said, the river Nile. It was, the, our God gave me a present of this little baby. Mishisihu. I got him from the water, this little boy in Egyptian. I, I was told it means from the Egyptian, it says, this little boy came out of the water. Ki minamayim, in other words, that his Nile, his God, Pharaoh's God, gave him this child. Could he do anything now? She she convinced, and by the way, she converted. You know that, don't you? She converted because of all the miracles. She didn't. Moshe Rabbeinu, far Aharon knew all this. He could see that the Kodesh Baruch Hu had a cheshbon. Cal everything was calculated, and when he saw his two sons were taken from him, he he realized. That the Kodesh Baruch was actually showing and teaching him that this is part, part of the Avoidah that the sons would learn. They would, they would be used to utilize, to teach us. Do you know what we learned from those two boys? Number one, they were drunk. Because the Torah comes later. He said, you shouldn't be damning or doing service when you're and, under the influence of drink. Look in the centers. You'll see it all there. Number one. Number two, they weren't married. They thought it was below their dignity to get married. Number three, they were waiting for Moshe and Aaron to drop dead so they could take over. They had no derech eretz. 
that's why when they went in and did the sacrifices, they were showing they didn't need Moshe now. They were capable of it. So Aaron understood what was going on here. It was all a cheshbon of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And that's why I say to you tonight, whenever anything happens in Eretz Yisrael, for Klal Yisrael, we can't ask questions. We've got to understand very, very clearly that we are under the Hashgacha of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Now, what does it mean by that? It means Kedoshim to you, Ki Kedosh Oni. We have to raise our Madrega to be Kedoshim. Where do we find that word, raising ourselves to a spiritual level in our mundane life? And people misunderstand it. When I got married, I said to my wife with a ring, Hare at Mekudeshesli, be consecrated to me. We're going to raise each other Mekadesh. We're going to sanctify each other. We're going to build a Mishkan. A base hamikdash. We're going to have a shulchan in that mishkan. We're going to have a chnosas orchim. We're going to have a void in that mishkan. We're going to have Torah in that mishkan. Everything was there to show us mikudeshes. We're taking the woman and we were raising her up onto a pedestal, making her mikudeshes a sanctification. That's what it's all about. Matovu holecho the oil. Our oil should be an oil shul Torah, even though it's only an individual home. It's an oil shul Torah. We put in its for him so we can learn and understand it. We're living in a time where it's never been easier to be able to wear all these crowns. Our home should be the Torah, the Avoida, the Gemilis Chasodim. The Mishka and the Shul should be the Torah, Avoida, and Gemilis Chasodim. And remember, the Gemilis Chasodim is not Tzedakah, giving a few pounds. You know, I always say this as a joke. There are different types of Jews. There's the gastronomic Jew. All he does to keep Yiddishkeit is he has homintashen and Purim, Matzah and Pesach, Latkes and Chanukah. He has and, and Rosh Hashanah, bubble, uh, what does he eat in Rosh Hashanah? Apple and honey. He'll tell you all the foods that you have to eat. But Gornish be Gornish, because he's a gastronomic Jew. You're right, that's number one. There's the cardiac Jew. He's a Jew in his heart. When he sits and watches television and he sees all the story, how wonderful the Jews are, we've just won another laureate prize or a Nobel Peace Prize or something. Oh, another Yid, I'm a Chaya. Do you think he keeps anything? Gornish. The armchair Jew. He likes to watch everybody else being Jewish, but please don't expect anything from me. There's a checkbook Jew. He signs a check. And let me tell you something, because I want to share this with you to remember. I don't think I've taught this to you, but I took the chess set and I took chess set in Atlanta as a, for my life. You know the game of chess? There are different pieces. Number one is a king. The king represents a Kodesh Baruch Hu, And the whole name of the game is to protect the king. Otherwise we're in Stuch. How do we protect the king with a queen? The queen is Shabbos. By keeping Shabbos, we protect the Kodesh Baruch we show that he created the world. Next to them are the bishops. And by the way, I don't compare myself to a bishop, but the bishops represent the Rabbonim, the leadership, who are teaching us how to keep Shabbos, how to protect the Kodesh Baruch But then we need teachers in our schools. They're the knights in armor. Sadly, today they have to wear armor when they go to school. So many teachers get attacked in school, and it's not a joke. And they're the teachers who are teaching, the, helping the Rabbonim. But you know, the most important piece at the top is the Rook, the castle. That's the home. The homes are the central part of Yiddishkeit. Oy hell, if we keep our homes, our homes will show the Yiddish, that's where it all begins in our homes. Then the teachers have an easy job. The Rabbonim have a Mechayadik job. Shabbos is protected. HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But you know, you can have as many Rabbonim as you like as many teachers as you like, but you need the little people in the front. That's the Hamoin Am. The people have got to be with us. They can't turn around and say, oh, well, the rabbi will do this, or the teachers are doing that. Don't abrogate your responsibility. They're the ones who are the most important people. We then go from white squares to black squares. White squares are simchas, and black squares are sad times. We move around the board 
from good times, bad times, all from a Kodesh Baruch there. But you know, there's white pieces and black pieces. The white pieces represent the Yates or Taiv. That's the ones that are going to be protected, the good times. The black pieces represent the Yates or Hurrah. But at the end of the day, the name is checkmate, correct? You've heard that. That's checkmate means we can't move any further. But that's the problem. People seem to think checkmate is you sign a check and you've done everything you can for Yiddishkeit and you've protected it. It doesn't work. That is not Yiddishkeit for us. And that's why all these sedras are coming to teach us. While we might not have Eretz Yisrael as our own homeland properly, we don't have the Beis Hamikdash, we don't have the Mishkan, but we still have the opportunity of becoming Kedoshim, building our home. Because if we build our home, that home will be taken to Eretz Yisrael. Our shuls will be taken to Eretz Yisrael. And that's why on Yom Kippur, in the morning, we talk about the Mishkan. We talk about the Beis Hamikdash. We talk about the Kedusha. We talk about the importance of the Yom Kippur, the Teshuva, the looking forward to betting ourselves. But in the afternoon, we get back to reality. You can't have Teshuva. You can't have it if your homes are no good. If there's immorality. The immorality doesn't necessarily just mean uh, physical relationships. Immorality means Geneva. That all their Seres Adibras, Lausigna, Lausina, it's all there. It's got jealousy and all the rest of it. But it's also the beginning. Don't take your Kaddish, but you know, I'm learning at the moment, say for Achinuch, and it says that we, Hashem Hashem Lashov, don't take God's name in vain. You should only know page after page after page warning us how we say things and we don't realize. If you say Beli Neida, you've got to mean Beli Neida. Don't, don't say, oh, I'm not going to do that again. Or I'm, if you see I'm going to give it Sudoka, you have to give it because unless you say Beli Neida, always you have to keep doing this thing. So you can see how every single sedra is connected one after the other. And they go here to the last two sedras. I must tell you, it's an interesting thing here. At the end of the Bamidva, we've got the Torah. You've got, you know, in the Seder, you've got the Torah. But I'm going to tell you, it's not in this week in the Torah here, but the Torah appears twice, correct? In this week's Seder and in Kisovoi. What is the sin that we do that will get us this curse? From a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Have a look, not in this week, but look in Bukhukai site. Look in, in Kisovo, in the second set. Shiloh Simach. It says, You did not rejoice in doing the mitzvahs. You did them miserably. You did them out of rote. You didn't prepare. If that's the attitude, the Kodesh Baruch Hu said, It's useless. Could you see the warnings that we've got here in the Tachocha? It's, an, it's a frightening thing, this. We want to get all the brochas that Kodesh Brochah can give us. We want the Mishkan. And of course, you know, I told you about the after the is the Keruvim on the top of facing each other. Because at the time of Shlom Melech, the Keruvim were separate back to each other because they weren't looking at each other. There was wars amongst Klal Yisrael. We've got to try and get Klal Yisrael back together again. People have got to understand and to realize we can't change the Torah. Please understand this. We are, we've got to be proud of our Torah and proud of what we have. It's all there. We can all bring about it. So when you, when my wife asked me, why did the Kodesh Baruch Hu tell us, what was his warning to us? And the answer she gave, she gave it to me. We've got to better ourselves. That one midst of Avas Yisrael, there is so much animosity, so much hatred, so much anger. It's about time we started thinking about this. And that's where it all comes in to the end of Chazak, Chazak, Venis Chazak. As individuals, we've got to have that inner strength. And that inner strength will help others to have strength. You know something? It's, it's a very interesting thing that I remember there was once one of the G'dayli was asked, Rabbi, the beginning of the last century, Rabbi, have you heard of the latest invention? He said, the train, the steam train. You remember the steam trains? Can you remember the steam trains, Mr. Jacobs? Do you remember them? The steam trains when you got choked in the, with the smoke and everything, and you would go in and sit there and knock. Us. Austin Holland, you have to. Yeah, you got them. All right. So he said, oh, yeah, so they asked, they asked this Godel, what do you think of this invention called the steam train? He says, what's for what says? He said, it's nothing new. 
He said, what does a steam train do? He says, the steam train, one hot engine schleps eight cold carriages. One person with enthusiasm can influence eight other people. Do you know that how easy it is to influence people? You've got your shear here. You started the shear, Dr. Jacobs. You've got, Mr. Jacobs, you've brought them all in. And they're coming in at the influence of learning Torah. Only one person can bring in a group of people. That's what he said about the train. The train is a kezah, is a hoisazach. It's full of enthusiasm, full of excitement, and it schleps along the old cold ones. That's what we should be doing today, showing our enthusiasm, showing our excitement. So as chazak, we have to be strong and courageous in our own way of life. And we're going to help each individual to be strong. Then we need chazak. We become as a kehila. We become a strong kehila again. Powerful to know that we can move forward. You know, I tell you, everybody's feeling the pain. I mean, when, when we had, in, and I can tell you stories where so many lives were lost during the war, not just by the Nazis, Yibar Shimon. I had a case, and I can tell you it's a true story, of a man who came from Germany and he married out. And he was a man who went to yeshiva. And I got friendly with him. I invited him to my home. I said, tell me, I said, why have you done this? He said, look, he said, I'm telling you now, we learned, we learned together. I was back out of him, so I brought him back. He said, I can't divorce her now, it's not right. She's been a wonderful partner to help me. But he said, I regret having done it. So I said, well, why did you do it? He said, because my sister was in Germany and she was looking for somebody to adopt her here. Do you know, in those days you had to get an adoption. You couldn't just come to this country. Somebody had to stand up for you and accept you as a, a refugee coming here. And uh, nobody would do it. And she died in the camps. He said he could never forgive anybody, but he regretted because he'd have to realize that this was Mina Shumayim. And this is all we have to think about this. And some of the, the, the stories that you can tell, that it, it's just unbelievable. There's one story I could love to end you with. Was I, I met a guy who had given up Yiddishkeit. And I said to him, why have you given up? He said, because I, he said, I was in the camps. He said, there was somebody there, a cook called Frumer, he said, this was his words. He said, he had a cedar. He said, and everybody wanted to use the cedar to dive in from it. He said, and he would only give it if you gave part of your ration to him. He said, I thought that was disgusting. He said, well, if a man can do that in the camps, he says, I want nothing to do with your Judaism. And the Rav asked him the question. He said, tell me, he says, how many people use the cedar? Oh, he said there were dozens of them lining up to use it. And they all paid a little bit. So he said, well, why can't you see the good in everybody? He said, there was a reason why he did this. Perhaps it wasn't for him. Perhaps it was for somebody else who wasn't well or something. Why have you always gone to the negative and not the positive? Look how many people use the cedar. You criticize the rabbi, I, I praise the people who use the cedar. Can you see? It depends on what you look. The cup is half full or the cup is half empty. And this is how we have to learn. And that's why I say to you all today, we're coming to Kabbalah Satoira. We're counting Sphira Sa'ima. And we mustn't lose the opportunity to prepare ourselves. The hachon or the preparation is more important than anything. That's from the lechem upon him. Our homes should have all the miracles. Our Shabbos light should burn bright the whole week. We should feel the influence of the Shabbos light because that's when they come. You know the story, two malachim come after Shabbos. They see your table set, your lights are burning. And one, the Yates are toy balach, I said, may you be blessed for many more years to have this. If you come and there's nothing there and they're just sitting in front of the television, the Yates are hurrah, I said, may you be cursed and that will be your, 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 your future. We have to look and see. We can have our Torah. That's the oil. The Torah can be in our homes. We open our homes to our guests, to visitors. If you can't have them to your home at the moment, I've got a message Shabbos. this Shabbos. We've had a baby born. My wife's already catering for them. You go out, you help these people. So that, and, and give it an avoider. This is, the avoider is helping as many people as you can in the, in the avoider of giving tzedakah, going all these other things. We can have our homes, but also important is that we should all have a shame to have al Gabehem on all of them. If we do it, we do it with a good heart. And that's why I wish you all a good Shabbos. I wish you a good Chodesh. We come to Sivan now.
can't believe it's almost in Rosh Hashanah. And it's scary how the months are just flying by. Think about it. The months are flying by. We're coming now to Shlosh Hashanah, the three days of preparation. Everything is to do with preparation. So prepare for Rosh Hashanah, for Shavuos. We should all be ready for the Matan Torah and Bishor Torah and Maslachas. We should all be Zoycha that we will come up and we will say this Shabbos. Shetachadish Oleinu. It's a chodesh as a the toiva with the brocha. It should be for good for each of us a brocha. Shle chayim baruchim, chayim shel sholem, chayim shel toiva, chayim shel brocha, chayim shel panosa, chayim shel chilutz at sabbos. We should all be gezund. And of course, we go on and say sheyesh b'hem yira shemayim for yira shkait. Sheyesh b'hem busha uchlima. We should be embarrassed to do anything wrong. And this is what we should do. Look at the words of that tefillah. And may that tefillah come true. And we come and say, Chaveri, call Yisrael. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful, wonderful Shabbos, everybody. And to you, good Shabbos and good Chaveri. We're up to date now. Shavuos. We can look at a bit about Shavuos. We can see perhaps some Torah on Shavuos. We'll see. We, we, Moshe, Moshe had a bit of a problem there. He had to wake Klali Saul up. They were all fast asleep. That's why we learn all night to show we're keen. You know, Moshe Farah didn't. He went to bed. The 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 the, the uh, Makas Bechayros had to wake him up, uh, and we had to wake because we've got to prepare for it. So may the Hachana be wonderful. May you have a fabulous yontif, and I look forward to speaking to you all next week in Mitzvah Hashem. Okay, Mr. Jacobs, thank you a million. God bless. You thank you very much. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Good Thank you very much. And good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos.